பாடலே பாடப் போகிறோம் இந்த பாடல் நிச்சயமாக நம்முடைய உள்ளார்ந்த மனிதனுக்கு அது பலமுள்ளவனாக இருக்கப் போகிறது அல லூயா இந்த பாடலை பாடுவோமா அல லூயா தேவன் <laughs> again welcome to the part 2 of the uh, 28 biblical reasons to go to church all right i straight away want to start with my pointers uh, so i greet all of you may god bless all of you all right and um, he will give you the desires of your heart all right so let me continue where i stopped last week all right uh, today we will go to reason number 15 why do we need to go to church i've given you 14 So let me start with 15 and end this uh beautiful message or sermon or teaching I would call, all right? Number 15 it says go to church to stir up one another to love and good works. It's written in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Yes. If you don't go to church you will hinder the fruit of love and good works coming from your life. You have been blessed with the fruit of love. So a church is a place where you go. You bring your physical body 
be imparted by the spirit of god so that you will do things out of your mind will be a mind of christ go to church to stir up one another to love and good works don't stop doing good and don't forget there are others that need you to stir them up to love and good works do you want to see more love and good works in the world then you need to actually be in relationship with other believers in the church some people don't like to have relationship with others because they think that the mouth is big all right the the murmuring never stops the gossip never ends and these are the people all right stop looking at all these people stop it do what you need to do do what you have been called for never miss your opportunity to do good If God gives you a vision, he provides you the provision. Point number 16, why do we need to go to church? So go to church to celebrate baptism and fulfill the great commission. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20. It says, "Go therefore and make disciples of all nations." All nations that means Chinese, Malays or Indians or Pakistani, Kazakhstan, right, Israelite, whatever, right? All nations. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. How exactly can a Christian fulfill the great commission alone? How would that work? Say you lead someone to the Lord and baptize them. Then what? Send them off on their own because we don't really need other believers in our lives? No. The entire work of making disciples is done with relationship in mind. You got to have a relationship. When I don't have a relationship with someone, I could not understand the mind of that someone. The same way it is you and God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot understand what God is telling you. If you don't have a relationship with your brothers and sisters in the house of God, you cannot understand or you cannot say or you cannot celebrate anything without the relationship with them. Point number 17. Go to church to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, 27 and 28. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, "Take eat, this is my body." And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, "Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant." which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins notice how jesus says to drink of it all of you jesus instituted the lord's supper the communion with a gathering of his disciples so go to church to celebrate the lord's supper i've been told that these days we have the online communion online baptism online celebration online worship online sermon well we also were uh, no choice right we did that last year i remember but going to church physically walking into the house of god stepping in is different the atmosphere is different the experience is different it is totally different so you go to church to celebrate the lord's supper it's so good to take the lord's supper with the body of Christ together in the presence of God. Point number 18, why do we need to go to church? Go to church to care for one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 25. That there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. The members must have the same care for one another. Care for one another. We call uh, our uh, gathering groups all right as care groups, but there is no care. people don't care in care groups care groups the main thing to be in a care group is to show care 
When somebody has delivered a baby, they show, show care. When somebody has no food in their house, show care. When somebody is fallen sick, show care. When somebody is physically uh, ill, show care. When somebody is spiritually down, show the care. Care for one another. And you can only go to the church to see these people that they need care. The care of God through you. Care for one another, the Bible says. I repeat back the scripture again in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Don't show favoritism. Care for this person, but you fail to care for them because they did something wrong to you. Care for one another. That's the house of God. Point number 19. Go to church to suffer together. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 16. If one member suffers, all suffer together. That's what the Bible says. Pastor, do I need to go to church to suffer? Well, that's what the Bible says. You suffer together. When the church is going through some kind of storm, we go through it together. That's why even in this nation, we say that we are together in this. As nobody can say that I'm not part of this and you jump boat. Probably you are in a smaller boat. And the boat is rocking. But you see a, a cruise coming and you jump boat. And you go to the cruise and say that I, this is my better place. God told me to jump. Unfaithfulness. Go to church to suffer together. Point number 20. Why do we need to go to church? Go to church to rejoice together. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 16 if one member is honored, all rejoice together. I like this. If one member is being honored, the whole entire church must rejoice together. If one member has achieved something, all rejoice together. If one member has pleased God somewhere, all rejoice together. If one member has completed the task, all rejoice rejoice together. That's why you need to go to church to be part of the community. Point number 21. Why do we need to go to church? Go to church because the body needs you in order to grow. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. As a member of Christ's body, you have a part to play. All of us. In fact, you are a part of the building and growing of the church. You are part of the growing of the church. I'm so blessed to say that the church is growing. We have not grown up yet, but we are growing every day. Every weekend when the church comes, we are growing up. When does service starts? Service starts. Church starts after the church service. That's where lifestyle starts. Some people tend to be holy and too holy during the service times, but they fail to manifest the Holy Spirit outside church hours. Church starts after the church service. So, Go to church because the body needs you in order to grow. Grow. Why does the Bible say you are a tree planted in the streams of water? The Bible uses the word as tree. You and me, we are tree. Why? Because we must be planted deep. The roots must grow deep. The streams of water, I always say it's the Holy Spirit. You must be planted in the Holy Spirit. Then you will grow. And that is the house of God. Point number 22. Go to church because every part of the body is indispensable. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21 to 22. The Bible says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. This eye cannot tell this hand, I don't need you. Nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. The head cannot tell the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. 
you need one another to call ourselves to be a complete body all right you cannot say you don't need the rest of the body and the body cannot say they don't need you let the truth of this word sink in you are indispensable the body needs you you need to go to church the body needs you point number 23 go to church to remind one another of what we were created for yes Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works why are you being created look at yourself i always look at myself why am i created to do good works in Christ Jesus which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them <laughs> god has prepared beforehand to do good in Christ Jesus we go to church to remind one another of what we were created for somebody might have forgotten show them by actions show them by the word of god show them talk to them tell them teach them preach to them with love tell them that we need one another and why we were created and that is the house of god point number 24 go to church to live out the reality of who you are first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation what does what do this description of race priesthood and nation have in common they are all groups containing a, a plur, uh, sorry plurality of people excuse me on that that means is more than one Whether you like it or not, you are part of a group. This is a part of your identity now. That go to church to live out the reality of who you are. You are a chosen generation, chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Don't look down on yourself. Don't come and uh, tell the world that I'm a slave. I'm a prisoner. Well God is calling you today that you are a chosen race, chosen generation whether you are a white man or a black man, whether you're a yellow man or a brown man, whether you're an Indian or a Chinese or or you're a Caucasian, whoever you are. You are a chosen generation, chosen race, a royal priesthood and a holy nation. So you go to church to live out the reality of who you are. You go to church to know your identity in the kingdom of God. If not, you will feel what you are going through. You will be experiencing of what has taken place in your life. Point number 25. Go to church because we proclaim his excellencies better together. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 it says, "A people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light god didn't just create individual christians to proclaim his excellencies he created his chosen generation royal priesthood or holy nation to do that and that is you and me so we go to church because we proclaim his excellencies better together corporate worship coming together as a power coming together is strength coming to the house of god demonstrating his power that we are united to show love united to honor one another united to serve one another united to preach the gospel united to tell the world that god loves them point number 26 go to church to remember who you belong to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 10 Once you were not a people but now you are God's people 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 10 it says once you were not a people but now you are God's people so you go to church to remember who you belong to you belong to God Yes I am possessed by God sounds better than saying that I am demon possessed You belong to God 
be a history maker be a, a person who change the world but before you change the world we must change ourselves change our mindset come out from the traditions and move into god's holiness come out from the religious spirit and move into its presence come out from the outer court go deeper into the holy of holies point number 27 go to church to get equipped In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 it says and he gave the apostles the prophets the evangelists the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints of the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ go to church to get equipped to equip the saints for the work of ministry this is the place where you are trained this is a place where you are being mastered this is the place where God uses you where God teaches you where God he keeps you through the word of God through servants of God the house of God is a beautiful place that's why the bible says right we rejoice as we go into the house of God yes let us rejoice as we walk into the house of God point number 28 the last one Why do we need to go to church? Go to church because we are going to live in glorious unity with God and each other for all eternity. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, "Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God." This is a glorious picture. of our future with God and it includes of all of his people but if you are distancing yourself from God's people now you have to wonder your eternal destiny even sounds good to you you got to wonder that so you go to church because we are going to live in glorious unity we are rehearsing of what is going to take place in the coming days Point number 28, all right? I like that because it talks about to live in glorious unity with God. The house of God is a place where you live with him. Yes, so today I'm so happy, all right? If you love Jesus, you can learn to love those he loves. I've completed this two parts of my teaching today with Bible verses that why do we need to go to church? we have all reasons we don't like to do some things we don't like that person we don't like this person we 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 carry the reasons but let me tell you one thing all right no matter how many reasons you carry god knows whether you're lying or not whether you're telling the truth or not is fear overtaking you i'm taught and i'm teaching people blessings must overtake us not fear if fear is overtaking you that means you have the fear of unity fear of faith fear of sicknesses fear of illness fear of the devil fear of death if you have all these things let god deliver us and make us to walk in to the house of god so thank you very much for listening in this two part of my uh sermon message teaching right may god bless you and Uh, you will do greater things and you will do well all right and that is my prayer for all of you and i'm so blessed all right to minister to all of you through this crown channel it's been a great blessings all right and uh, a number of people have written to me uh, may god bless you my prayers are always with you all right and uh, i see you again in the coming days god bless let's pray heavenly gracious father we thank you for this beautiful time the appointed time the set time that you are seated on the throne and we know lord that you are the ruler of this universe you are the master and we come before you lord with a humble heart lord thank you for completing and giving me the opportunity to complete this teaching on the 28 biblical reasons of why we need to go to church 
Thank you for the part two, O oh Lord. The other 14 reasons. So totally, O oh Lord, 28 reasons that you have given us. Why do we need to go to church? And all these viewers, O oh Lord, have a good heart, a heart of flesh, a forgiving heart. As they are watching this, O oh Lord, I pray that you will stretch your hands among them, upon them. Yes, O oh Lord. Place both your hands on their heads, O oh Lord. Anoint them with heavenly oil so that their cup shall overflow, overtake. Yes, Master. Build everybody's life in a very special and powerful way, Allah. Remove every tears, every sorrows. Change it to joy. Let them rejoice as they step in to the house of God with a thanksgiving heart. Thank you once again, Lord. You're a lovely God and we love you. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.